My name is Diana Twiss. I am inspired by curiosity. I'm inspired by a deep desire to learn things, uh, learn how things work, learn how things could work together. Um, mostly inspired by curiosity. I love to make yarn. I love to spin. And in the spinning, I love learning new aspects of the spinning. Uh, the latest thing that I have really enjoyed learning is more about spindle spinning. And I think that's because spindle spinning, spindles are, um, they're as simple as you can get. Um, the idea that you could make complex yarn just using a stick. Now I know it's a, sometimes it's a very fancy stick, but some of the sticks can be very, you know, very rudimentary, very rough. And that really, that really appealed to me, you know, really getting back to basics. It's easy to, easier to fit spindle spinning into your day than it is to fit wheel spinning into your day. For me to fit wheel spinning into my day, I have to be in a certain place. I have to be in my studio in front of my wheel. But with spindle spinning, um, they are so very portable. I can grab any minute that is available to me. Uh, lately, with a lot of Zoom meetings or a lot of, you know, the Zoom calls, particularly when you're a participant listening, I find that I can listen better if I'm twirling, if I'm just spinning a little bit. Um, I also find time in the morning and in the evening to do a bit of spindle spinning, and I, I use that as a bit of a meditation, uh, a way to get, get a focus for the day and in the evening to relax and unwind and reflect on the day. So I'm finding these little minutes throughout the day where I can do that. And uh, it's a surprising what 15 to 30 minutes of spindle spinning can really add up to a good amount of yarn over time. A question that I'm often asked by new people who are coming new to spindle spinning, particularly support spindles, is what do I buy? Um, you know, it's, it's a really challenging thing because when you're at the very beginning of that kind of spinning exploration, I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, I had no idea what to look for in a spindle. I didn't know what features would be of benefit. I read a lot about them. I read a lot about, you know, this is a Tibetan style. Uh, this, is a, this is a Russian style. Um, this, you can't really fully see it. Oh, this one is, is more the, the Pong style. Or, so I didn't, know, I didn't know the difference. I didn't know the advantage or the disadvantage. And I just started, I just started buying them. I, uh, I tried to buy, I tried to purchase primarily from Canadian makers because I really wanted to support uh, you know, a Canadian spindle, uh, spindle making industry. I found a few, but I also found a lot of American spindle makers, and then that took me, you know, once I started getting into this, I started finding other uh, makers of spindles. And then I just, I just kept trying them. I tried them, and I would use them and assess them, and then use them almost back to back with each other so that I could get a feel for what it is that I was looking for. One of the things that I have found is the, the thickness of this part of the shaft really matters to me. Um, if, it's, if it's too thin, um, I don't like it. If it's too thick, it, it ends up hurting my hand after a while, um, and it ends up being a little bit slower. I also noticed that the weight of the spindle was something that, uh, that mattered to me, so, you know, starting with something that's, this one actually is 16 grams, which I thought, wow, that's gonna be really, really, uh, maybe a little too light, but it ended up, it ends up being just absolutely wonderful. It will, just with a quick flick, it will hold a spin for a long time. The other thing I learned is, based on the style of spinning that I do, um, having a really long shaft, having a super long one was, it just didn't work for me. So anything over 11 inches, I, I actually didn't like. 
But if it's shorter than that, it doesn't give me the room to create the temporary cop that my spindle style, um, I started to appreciate. I would say um, if, if I was an absolute, you know, advising, uh, if I had the gall to advise an absolute beginner, um, I, would, I would start with uh, the Tibetan style because you can focus on the spinning and the making the yarn without being overly worried about the cop you're building. The cop is this, um, is what we call the, the stored yarn. And when you're working with this kind of a spindle, you have to learn how to build the cop in such a way um, that you, you don't have these borders to, to sort of guide you. And so there's, a, you know, there's different strategies for trying to build a cop on this kind of a spindle, and particularly on these, where you see there's, it's, you're just building it against this part of the shaft. So that, that can be a bit challenging at the beginning, but it's all learning and, and it's a way that uh, you just kind of dive in and learn how to do it. But I would say a Tibetan spindle between 20 and 20 and 30 grams with uh, about 10 and a half, uh, you know, 10 to 10 and a half inches, that would be for me. Um, that's how I would get started. There's also, you know, there's, you know, you can see that there's different tips. You know, you can get a metal tip. Some of these have metal tips. Some of them just have wooden tips. Um, I don't really have a huge preference for those, uh, but I do notice, yeah, they are fast. One of the things I have noticed in the spindles that, that I'm constantly reaching for are the spindles that when I give them a good flick and then I try to put the brakes on them, is I just give that feel for how long does it, how much pressure do I have to use to slow it down? Some just slow down like boom, the minute you, the minute you touch them. And some of them you, you need a certain amount of pressure, but just assess that kind of pressure. And that'll give you a sense for that kind of the, the momentum that that spindle will have. If you have a spindle that is really heavy to start with, it's going to, it's going to twirl and it's going to twirl really well. But as soon as you get 10 grams or 20 grams of fiber on it, you're pushing a lot and you will find that you're, you might find that your hand gets a little sore. It's all a bit of an adventure and the other rabbit hole, to be careful you don't fall down, is that they are just beautiful tools that are made by hand. Uh, here's a lovely one that is absolutely hand carved. He doesn't even use mechanical tools to make the spindle. So this is hand carved by an artisan in Bellingham. Absolutely lovely. Here's a, a you know, as I said, the, the sort of the, the Pong style. And this is kind of figuring out, okay, when I'm making the, when I'm making the, or storing the yarn, do I start in this wiggly, you know, this sort of the waist part and then kind of build it out from there? It's, it's all a bit of an adventure because what you're building, when you're building your cop, that becomes part of your spindle. So you want it to be tight, you want it to be nicely packed on, and you want it to add to the, the, the speed and the weight. You don't want it to be loose and floppy and um, creating friction as the, as the spindle is twirling around. I can be found at the School of Sweet Georgia. I can also be found on Instagram as Diana Twist. And I also have a blog called 100 Mile Wear. So you can find me in those three places.